I'm Bob Bruniga, WB4APR, and APRS is Automatic Packet Reporting System, which is a common digital channel for exchanging digital information about all of amateur radio going on in the local area. Then we began referring to it as automatic position reporting when the GPSs became available and now we could include position information into the data channel as well as uh, messages and other information. And so it became very popular uh, with the growth of GPS. In fact, it's mostly status reporting. What is happening in an area? Who is on the air? Are, are there meetings? Are there nets in progress? In other words, any activity that is happening should beacon what it is doing and then everyone within that area is informed of what's going on and, and so they could enjoy amateur radio in their own way. Actually, I first met Kenwood uh, uh, at the Kenwood booth in 1996 at the Dayton Hamvention and they indicated they were looking at a data radio and so we started talking about what we were doing with APRS in the United States and what they were doing with uh, Navitre in, the, uh, in Japan and so they sent an engineer and to the Baltimore uh, Digital Communications Conference in 1996. We sat down and uh, we discussed the radio they were working on, uh, how we had APRS concept, and they said, let's put the APRS concept into this digital radio, and that was the birth of the uh, THD7. Uh, and it was a fantastic time because uh, the, uh, the Japanese engineers would come up with ideas, we would come up with ideas in APRS, and they would always be merged together because we had the two-way communications and uh, we met together frequently to make sure that uh, we were providing a product that would meet the need. And uh, so then they came out with the D700 in the year 2000 time frame. And uh, then we proceeded on to the D710. We finally realized that the most important thing about communicating to another amateur radio operator is what voice frequency he's on. We already know that he's on the APRS data channel because that is where everyone tunes in to see what is happening. But once you see what is happening, you need to know his voice frequency to talk back. So with each, with each new idea, the engineers and I, we would work together on how we would fit it into the radio. And of course, then we had the models early enough to where we could um, test them, uh, actually use them on the air, see how the users liked it, what, was, uh, what we could improve, make better. And so each new radio builds on all the experiences of the past, and what comes out is exactly what we want at that point. So APRS is not a static system. It's always growing uh, as we try to find a way to present the information to the user of the radio with what uh, APRS environment is trying to present. I'm very excited that Kenwood has uh, given me the opportunity to introduce the THD72 because it's the ideal radio as far as I'm concerned. I thought the TMD710 was the ultimate radio and now they've taken those features and pretty well uh, compressed them all into the THD uh, 72 and so it's, it's everything you'd want in an APRS radio. The GPS is built in, the TNC is built in, um, radio interface, uh, lithium ion battery, uh, PC interface on a USB, GPS interface, and all the standard radio interfaces, audio, speaker, mic, and so forth. In addition to having the built-in GPS, it still has the external uh, GPS serial input for an external GPS such as the AVMAP uh, personal navigator and the advantage of that uh, GPS is it has a full map display including all 200 uh, APRS symbols so that all of the APRS activity and amateur radio activity around you will come through the radio and show up on the AVMAP uh, GPS display. Another feature that is retained in the TH the D72 is the built-in TNC that operates you know, AX25 both at 1200 and 9600 baud it is also available on the USB port to external applications where you can run it in normal AX25 mode or KISS, uh, KISS mode. So any packet application can, can use the TNC and the radio as a standalone device. Okay, another neat feature of the THD72 is the built-in digipeter. We haven't had that in the, in the previous HT. And for search and rescue, sometimes you need to just deploy a lot of handhelds quickly without time to set up the digipeter. And so now you can activate the digipeter in the uh, walkie-talkie itself so that uh, teams over the hill can relay back through other teams uh, without any in infrastructure. The radio provides the infrastructure by providing the digipeters and the links back to uh, the search and rescue uh, headquarters. I'm all excited about this new capability that we haven't seen in any of the previous APRS radios and it's this multifunctional logging capability where you're able to uh, activate logging and save thousands of data points of your track history uh, as you uh, go out through your event. 
The, the other capability which is very exciting about this radio is Echolink is built into it just like APRS and that is a perfect marriage of the two global resources. APRS provides global connectivity through the APRS radio via the internet just like Echolink provides that voice link uh, through global use uh, via the internet. It's a follow-on continuum of the previous uh, Kenwood radios. So any user is completely familiar with the menu set, uh, the capabilities, and just everything is an add-on. And now you see what you would expect to see. Greater capabilities, uh, longer messages, uh, built-in GPS, uh, additional APR, uh, APRS interfacing functionality, the USB uh, interface port uh, for the PC, uh, completely standalone uh, packet radio capability, plus APRS. It's everything that I've ever wanted in an APRS radio.